Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Balkan. Today I have for you game 2 in a best of 3 between Dramora and Amber T and this is round 2 of Chicken Jew's European Tournament. Today we are seeing Carpique Julis and on the allied side we have Dramora with the first Panzerna and on the Axis side Amber T with the 352nd. So I would previous to this have said that on Carpique Julis the first Panzerna should have quite a large advantage at the start of this game versus the 352nd and the 352nd will have to rely on their late phase Yag Panthers to make back ground. However we have seen Amber T play around Carpique Julis with the 352nd very well in the past using Smoke plus his Panzer Jaegers to do a lot of damage. And it was really, really awesome strategy to see, and I can't wait to see it again in this game, assuming that it goes for that smoke Jag Panzer or Panzer Jaeger push. And it does look like he has some down already, so that's a good start. But yeah, in the last game, we did see Amity defeat Dramora with his guards armored versus Dramora's Panzer Lair. He found a really good advantage in phase B that was just too much for the Panzerlehr to deal with. And after the Panzerlehr lost one of their prized Panthers, it was game over and Dramora surrendered. So we'll have to see if this game's a little bit more competitive um, than the first one. I think both players were making very good moves in the first one, but I feel like Amber T had a game plan going into that game that allowed him to overcome the stronger tanks in phase B and C. So it's really up to Dramora to bring it back in this one if he wants to move on to round three otherwise he will be dropping to the lower bracket in this tournament which is significantly harder to get to the final from so let's have a look at some of the units going down here from amity we have the solid amount of panzer jaegers and the panzer 35r here we've got the mortar for the smoke rounds and the he rounds command infantry a couple of uh, ostriban and further down, more Ostropen with the Fusiliers and Command Infantry and Panzer 35. I really just love these compositions. It looks like so weak for an airfield push, but the way that Amber T plays around smoke is just really, really nice to watch. As for Dramora, he has the Cromwell 6, he has a Staghound, he's got a couple units of Straussi, um, Command Infantry, and an AT gun for the bottom side. For the mid, he's got a couple units of Strelsey just to sort of keep the front line forwards. So that's pretty important, just to have those walk across the airfield and, you know, make some ground there for free. And on the top side, a couple units of infantry, AT gun and command. Going to be very important that that AT gun on the top side does not go down, otherwise it could leave an opportunity for Amber T's Panzer Jaegers and Panzer 35s to make some ground. There we have the orders out of the side of Dramora and out of the side of Amity. Looks like these forces are all just going to be clumping up on this road for now. We've seen this before. And I guess it's because Amity is going to wait for the aggression out of the first Panzerna and then play around that. Um, he could either decide to, you know, br blunt the push out of the first Panzerna, or he could choose to find the weakest spot of the first Panzerna and push like that instead. Now I'm surprised there's not any recon on this top side as I feel like Amber T is going to be lacking information across the airfield early on. He does have recon in the bottom side however and it looks, these, looks like these Fusiliers are actually getting into a decent position so we'll be able to see what's coming. You can see quite a lot of the, the trucks moving about from Dramora just from base recon from the Ostrupen, but Fusilier is definitely providing a lot more information on this bottom side. Okay, let's see. How does Dramora do here? Where is that going to unload? Okay, it is unloading in that small tree patch there, and the command infantry are going to be uh, unloading on top of them as well. He definitely needs to get the universal carrier and the command carrier out of the way though sooner than later Otherwise that becomes a very big target for mortar fire Now with the six pounder arriving on that top side it looks like um, The Panzer Jaegers are heading down to the bottom with the mortar here and this is going to be 
where Amberty makes his push. So it looks like Amberty is just a lot more comfortable using this tactic on the bottom side. It might just be because there are these groups of trees that are very good for like breaking line of sight in multiple ways which is a lot easier to smoke off than say on this top side where the ground's a lot more open. It would require a lot more smoke than playing around these trees on the bottom side. So that's um, a logical reason why Amber T might cho choose the bottom side and might prefer it. As for this top side, well the Panzer 35 going to be engaging the Universal Carrier and Command Carrier at the 1000 meter range. As long as it doesn't get into range of the 6 pounder it should be fine. Whilst Chupin are just taking up position in this bunker. Should probably go on to return fire so they don't reveal themselves to the Stralsi there. Or either these uh, Universal Carrier and Command Carriers because those could both just pin down the Ostrupin and surrender them at this moment in time due to there not being any command up there. So 120mm mortar is going to be the choice out of Amber T. He's going to be spotting and trying to mortar the 6 pounder of Dramora. Oh ho ho, that is massive, the one shot coming out of the 120mm mortar, 20HE landing straight on target and doing the job. Dramora didn't even have time to react to that. He was starting to move it back as far as I could see, but it just was not enough. And this 120mm mortar, well out of line of sight, can continue to find those kills. That was a very good kill uh, for Amber T early on. And if uh, Dramora doesn't replace that, then these Panzerjägers could be having a nice time very soon. There is already an Opal Blitz munition uh, coming up to resupply the 120mm mortar here, so he's going to be using that quite a lot. And he does have another Panzerjäger joining the Swarmer Panzerjägers that he likes to use. So the Panzer 35 are going to be continuing to engage the Universal Carrier. The Stralsi here are moving up using the cover of this bunker to then engage the Ostrup once they get inside the bunker. And yeah, Amberty's got to be very careful of his weak defence on this top side. It could fall apart very easily if Dramora recognises that there is barely any forces up here that have any substance. This Panzer 35, for example, could just, could just get taken out by something like a Staghound, and if Dramora moves his Staghound on the top side, he could easily find a good engagement against this Panzer 35 and then break through up there. Um, whereas, you know, Amber T at the, at the moment is currently just uh, grouping up on this bottom side. Now, Dramora has found himself 58% territory lead early on, which is giving him a plus two. That's due to the Strelsi in the airfield or in the middle of the airfield here and on this top side the small salient here due to the Ostrupen being pinned down and surrounded. Those Ostrupen, if that Strelsi just jumped forwards there slightly would just get the surrender, probably be a bit quicker way to deal with that. 120mm mortar now has arrived on this top side and two Panzer Jaegers are being purchased. So maybe this time around Amity is going to be going for the two-pronged attack, um, both using Panzerjägers on the bottom side and also on this top side. With there being no AT gun on the bottom side though, pushing down here is pretty safe for Amber T. Even a Staghound will die to a Panzerjäger due to the 9 AP. And another thing that's quite interesting is you can see that Amber T is keeping his command in the Kubel here and not unloading them until he needs to. And that's because he doesn't want his command infantry to fall behind unnecessarily. So that's really, really interesting play there out of Amity. Really, really enjoying these, like, not necessarily new strategies, but the strategy that Amity uses and the little tips and tricks he uses throughout these games. So Panzer 35 is now engaging the Staghound. Staghound has an overwhelming advantage in that engagement. And that's Staghound 8 AP versus 5 armor, and that has 4 AP versus 5 armor. This is an 800 meter range engagement, so technically this Panzer 35 has 6 AP. So it has like a 12% chance to penetrate at that range. Panzer is opening up onto the Zuya Dalsi in the middle of the field. That's going to take away Dramora's recon capabilities. And you can see finally the Grenfjörder have been unloaded. I'd like to see that Grenfjörder get a follow command onto one of these Panzer Grens, because then. Um, they could continue to just follow up as the Panzerjägers attack me forwards. Right, 120mm mortar has managed to uh, 
and I'll move I, this uh, six pounder from this tree area to this one. I'm, I assume that was possibly getting hit, but it looks like the smoke just came down and made that six pounder move just so it continued to have line of sight. But the triple Panzer Jaeger push coming up here once again. Look at him. Look at that team of Panzer Jaegers just rolling forwards. Very, very cool indeed. Right, on this bottom side, Sweardalsi nearly going down to the Panzer 35. We do see the Cromwell 6 now engaging some of the Austrian out of AMT. Early on, Dramora has found himself a plus one. But it's very important that uh, Dramora finds some kills onto these Panzerjägers sooner than later. Otherwise, he could be in for a hard time. Six pounder is moving here into line of sight of the Panzerjäger. JU87 is going to come down with the bombing strike onto the Cromwell 6. Now, this is interesting. This six pounder could just find a kill onto all of these Panzerjägers. It's managed to pin down one, manages to pin down all three. Six pounders in a really good position, but Amity did not drop the bombs onto the Cromwell and managed to, manages to pin down the six pounder before it could do too much more damage. Really, really nice job there by Amity reacting to that very quickly, not allowing the bombs from the JU 87 to be wasted on the Cromwell 7. And uh, oh, wow, very nice indeed. And Jaeger still making ground here. 120mm mortar is being counter-batteried by the Sexton, but it's not quite hitting the mark. Uh, Panzerjäger is continuing to push up into the face of this Staghound. Staghound is not quite in line of sight yet, going to be targeting these Ostrupen. Both of these Strelsi units hiding quite well on the airfield at the moment and providing quite a lot of ground for Dremora. JU87 is going to be coming in for the bomb strike onto the Sexton though, and we can see that the six pounder in this top side has now been dealt with by the 120mm mortar. Panzerjäger is going to be opening up onto the Strelsi here. Universal Carrier has managed to pin down the Ostrupen though, and if the Panzerjäger is going to continue to fire at the infantry, well, this Universal Carrier could have a chance to surrender that Ostrupen. As for this bottom side, Panzerjäger is still firing away, but have used up the majority of their HE ammunition now. Just do have to be very careful that uh, they don't lose too much morale, otherwise they could be double teamed by the Staghound and Cromwell 7 combo. Looks like the smoke's coming down from the 120 mil because it was probably the Cromwell 6 here that was providing the morale damage onto these Panzer Jaegers. Looks like the Staghound's going to be coming out in the open there. Oh, this is very risky from Dramora, especially with his Staghound on such low morale. Now it looks like it's a 1v1. We've got that Panzerjäger engaging the Staghound. Staghound firing back. It's going to be only a matter of time until that Panzerjäger gets forced to fall back or dies. Let's see. Both of these have limited accuracy, especially with the lack of veterancy on either side. Oh, a nice kill there from the Panzerjäger 35. Glad I went back down and checked that quick. This Panzerjäger getting into line of sight of the Cromwell six is going to bounce a shot we do now see a Cromwell 5 on the way though now Cromwell 5 is a pretty decent response and we have just moved into phase B so two Shermans now moving onto the field I would like to see both of those actually head to this bottom side just blunt one of the pushes out of Amber T because then you can push off that as well like, imagine if um, Dramora came in here with the two Shermans, killed off all of the Pan Panzerjäger 35s quite aggressively because the Panzerjägers would struggle to kill the Shermans, and then pushes through the 120mm uh, mortar, and there's not too much going on behind that. Other than now, a Marder 2 reinforcing tank on its way, or a tank destroyer. That tank destroyer, definitely the correct play at this point gives him the 1200 meter range versus these threatening sherman fives ju87 going to be going for the bombing strike onto the sexton but a hurricane mark IV has been purchased from jamora wants to try and get rid of that doesn't manage to stop the ju87 from dropping its bombs but is likely gonna shoot it down the hurricane they're getting very low to the ground as it flies over those hangars does manage to find the kill 120mm mortar on this top side is putting a lot of pressure on now. Managed to take out that six pounder and um, now it's slowly but surely carving down these infantry squads. The Sherman 5 has arrived here. Panzer Egg has fallen back. Now, having them so spread out might be a detriment to Amber T here as he won't be able to smoke them all that quickly. 
if they were all sort of relatively close together, then it wouldn't take very long for Amity to put one smoke down and cover them all. But here we see the Sherman 5 getting into range of this Panzer Jaeger. I would expect that one to go down. It's a one star Sherman 5, which has 11 AP. As soon as it hits, it should penetrate. Or at least get a critical that would keep the Panzer Jaeger in place. Yeah, there we go. Panzer Jaeger goes down. So that's one of two, or one of three, that have died now from Amber T. But with the Marder 2 arriving, that does make things difficult for the Sherman 5 to advance. So we do see a Panzer 35 now pushing across the field with Ostrupen. And I like this play a lot going to be using the Erzats and the Ostrupen to reveal these Strauss and then he's going to be able to pin them down and kill them off with the Panzer 35. On the top side Marder 2 arriving to reinforce the Panzer Jaegers up here but plus one was still in Dramora's favour for a very long time he's on 870 points at this moment. Dramora's found himself a significant lead in the early game which is perfectly fine he just needs to hold on to it as he moves towards phase C. And, well, currently it seems like Dramora is losing ground down here. He's lost all of his infantry. Command infantry just went down as well. It's Hurricane Mark IV comes in to rocket the Marder II, but does not find the kill. 120mm mortar has been pinned down, though, and is trying to be killed off by the Sexton. Now, Staghound and Sherman versus Panzer 35. Panzer 35 might go down in that engagement. Currently, a lot of ground being made across this airfield. Can the Sherman 5 engage and kill off this Panzer 35R? That would be pretty important. No, he cannot, because the Marder 2 is going to be engaging him from max range, which uh, makes him things kind of awkward. And also, the Panzer 35 there, bouncing a side shot, um, does do quite a lot of morale damage to the Sherman 5. Ooh, that's nasty. Panzer 35 gets the ammo storage hit. That removes all of the 50k ammunition halves the uh, rack of shells that they have. Panzer 35 on the top side does manage to take out one of the carriers, might even take out the second. Marder 2, looking for more shots, going to be finding a shot onto this Chelsea maybe? Okay, shooting the ones up there, that's fine. Okay, down on this bottom side, second Marder 2 arriving. Using these 1,200 meter range units is just working very well in favour of Dramora currently. What I'd like to see is the Firefly, um, the Firefly 1, come out of the Panzerna. Really, really useful for dealing with things like these Marders, because they can pin them down so damn quick. But look at these Grenfjellers, providing the extra veterancy that these Marders need. That's two star Marders, and they, pretty, they fire pretty damn quickly, getting through their HE ammunition quickly, though. 120mm mortar, just going to be finishing off all of these infantry squads and infantry in general across the board is becoming quite scarce for Dramora. I'm not sure if he's get, running low on like infantry availability or he's just not purchasing it, but yeah, that's not good. Hurricane Mark IV is going to get onto the back of the Focke-Wolf 190. Is going to be able to shoot that down, I would expect, unless it gets forced to fall back. It does. Hurricane Mark IV with the rocket does get killed in the process, so Amity survives with his Focke-Wolf and shoots down a hurricane in reply, which was a very, very nice trade indeed. These Stralzi have been pinned down once the Ostrupen recover. Those will be surrendered. And now it's a plus one in favour of Amt. So things have slowly but surely swinged in full favour of Amt. Early on, I felt like Dramora did well to find that plus two so early on. It would have been nice for him to find more kills onto the Panzer Jaeger 35s though, as I feel like it would have just put on that little bit more pressure that would have then allowed him to deal with Marder 2 so much more easily. Because at the moment, the main issue here is the Panzer Jaegers kind of screen the Marders quite well. Although saying that, um, two of the Panzer Jaegers on the top side have now been killed and two on the bot side have been killed. But now there's two Marder 2s on the bottom side and that Marder 1's still alive. So SDKFZ72 is going to be coming in to provide some AA so that he can continue with those Focke Wolf Hurricane engagements moving forwards. Panzer 35 and Fusilier are going to be engaging this command infantry and eventually killing them off. 
So that's going to leave the Cromwell 7 on its own to defend that top side. Firefly 1C is now on its way. JU87 comes in with the bombing strike onto the Sexton. And I like how Amber T is using this bomber to just not necessarily kill the Sexton, but just force it back and stop it from firing. Stop its sort of counter battery onto his own mortars. But now we see uh, Dramora being pushed back once again by these Marder 2s. Things getting pretty difficult now for Dramora. Amber T finds himself the plus 2 and will win the game in 19 minutes and 20 seconds if Dramora cannot rectify this. It all really comes down to the pan or the Firefly here. If that Firefly can find kills onto the Marders in the open before Amber T's infantry finds its way into these hangars, then he's going to be in a decent position to push back. But if these Ostrupen and Erzats get into these hangars and the Marders have advanced, things are going to get very difficult indeed because it's so much harder to dislodge infantry that's managed to get into cover. And it will take a lot of time um, to push back and therefore Amity will maintain um, his advantage in the game. Marder 2 there. Pop in another unit of infantry. That's not what you want to see when we already see a lack of infantry across the board from Dramora. On the bottom side, Chelsea just going to be holding on to a couple of these hangars. Would have been nice to have one in the centre there, stop those Ostrupen from taking that so easily. But on this top side, as that's still making ground, Cromwell 7 going to be engaged, or Cromwell 6, sorry, engaged by the Marder 2. Marder 2 is going to find a second shot, forces the Cromwell 6 to fall back. Firefly is on its way, but is going to require veterancy. I'd like to see. Um, maybe like a command truck or something like a dingo uh, accompany that because the extra veterancy there is very important for engaging these Marder 3s. Now we are 45 seconds away from Phase C and that's where Amber T can afford himself Yank Panthers. Once those come out it's actually going to be hard even for Fireflies to deal with those and uh, Amber T will be able to continue his dominance over the open ground which will then lead overall to his victory. Maintaining the plus two at the moment is just so important. The Firefly slowly but surely getting into range. Currently blocked by these trees though. Would like to find a shot onto at least one of these Marder 2s. JU87. Two star JU87. Going to get the track well destroyed onto the Sherman 5, rendering that pretty useless. Hurricane Mark 4 comes in to find the kill there, but the Focke Wolf 190 is on its way. I'm pretty sure that JU87 is going to get out. It's just a matter of how this engagement goes. Two star Focke Wolf does a lot of damage, but with the Bofors on the field, it might force the Focke Wolf to fall back. Okay, it looks like the Hurricane Mark 4 did get out alive. So is the Focke Wolf. JU87 comes in with the 4-5 HE power bombs, pins down the Firefly here, and that sort of allows the Marder 2s to remain safe for now. Fortunately, that Firefly is in a position whereby it should remain in cover. However, 2-star Marder is going to get a side shot. Oh lord. Oh lord. That Firefly was reversing in such a dodgy position. And it's only a matter of time until the Firefly gets hit by two Marder 2s in the side armour. That's another hit. This is devastating. Poor Dramora. It really is. That was one of his only chances, really, to come back in this game. And the way that that fell back was really not in his favour. He could have maybe smoked it off with the Sexton as soon as it got pinned down. But I don't think I would have expected the Firefly to reverse in that direction. Very odd indeed. But after 21 minutes, 17 seconds, Dramora is going to throw in the towel and uh, relinquish the best of three to Amity, who is going to be victorious and move on to round three of the tournament, technically the semi-final. So there we go. Amity showing dominance once again in the open with the 352nd Infantry. Very, very nice play from him. Um, used two batches of, like, Panzerjägers supported by 120mm mortars 
um, to deal with uh, the armor of the first pound Cerner early on. Very interesting indeed. The six pounder almost got the jump onto three Panzergers, almost got three kills, but Amberty's reactions with that Ju87 stopping it from bombing the Cromwell six was the turning point. It was so vital that those Panzergers did not go down, otherwise a huge hole would have formed on that top side and Dramora could have taken full advantage of that. But either way, Amity comes out victorious. In terms of kills, we see the Sherman 5 picking up a couple of Panzergers in the end. Cromwell 5 there takes out one itself. But that's all the kills from Dramora. In terms of losses, we can see these Panzergers did deal with the stag counts quite well. Panzer 35 taking out the command carriers and universal carriers nicely. And then the Marda 2s. They came in, took out the Cromwell 6, took out the Cromwell 5, and eventually took out that Firefly. And that was the killing blow for sure. But that's all for now, guys. Hopefully, you have enjoyed this video and this game. We'll be moving next into the lower bracket once again to check out the round two matches between Dramora and Walther and Gonzo and Chickenju. So look forward to those. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then. Goodbye.